violence in the workplace. A little bit of background on nursing workplace and the violence is that we lose uh, money and time. Money and time in the form of multiple variances such as calling in sick or uh, having to see a therapist and as well as uh, equipment damage and uh, time lost uh, from uh, either losing personnel, getting fired, or personnel who have been let go, or personnel who quit. Most likely it's the latter. And um, one of the cl clinical implications is that we as nurses have to treat patients regardless of how and what their uh, particular personalities are or what they've done in the past. Once they're in our care, it is up to us um, to provide medical care. So a little bit of information about me. Fun fact, I used to work as a corpsman for the Marine Corps Infantry during the times of war. And um, there was during the time that um, we had a firefight and that's when I had a fist fight. So that's what, that's what started to get me into the trail of why would people that you were taking care of want to retaliate or attack you as a nurse providing care. And um, after the, the military, I went over to work for the VA with a psych inpatient unit. And even though the patients were uh, actually pretty pleasant, but we understood that during some times, uh, depending on the diagnosis, they would be quite aggressive. And we would have to call a code in order to uh, diffuse the situation. Uh, one thing I want to preface this with is that I will be talking about, I know there's uh, lateral violence between nurses against nurses or healthcare providers against nurses, but this particular uh, presentation is going to be focusing mostly on uh, patient aggression towards nurses within the workplace um, uh, workplace scenario. And my PICO question is, in or among nurses, working with patients, does preventive measures to treat aggression versus current practice result in less fatalities and injuries from workplace violence in one year? So what I learned from the literature review were some kind of surprising things and uh, I'll talk to you about what works and what doesn't according to the studies that I've read. I uh, also wanted to know that uh, the most th top three places where violence against nurses occur is uh, emergency department, the ICU, and the psych inpatient units within that order. <clears throat> a little bit of a background, I started with researching gun violence. I know there's a lot predominantly a lot of uh, uh, exposure in the media with regards to gun uh, violence, you know, particularly in schools and public places, but I wanted to focus particularly on the hospital situation. Uh, so I started with gun violence and I s realized, you know, based on the literature, that the, the perpetrators were primarily male, around 91%, and they were motivated mostly by grudge and suicide. This is in contrast with um, male perpetrators who would try to attack and shoot and kill people in such as a school scenario or a public situation where there are random victims. Uh, in this situation, most of the people who shoot within the hospitals are essentially looking for a primary victim, somebody who's done him or her wrong. And uh, this can be exemplified in the recent uh, events of this year, early 2017, where a doctor who had worked in the Brooklyn Hospital had, uh, was fired and then came back and went to go look and murder the person that had actually fired him. Although he had been, um, he had been accused of multiple counts of sexual harassment and sexual assault, um, he felt that this was not justified and so that's one of his reasons he had a grudge against his particular boss. And um, the other reasons why there's uh, gun violence within the hospital includes euthanizing a family member, quote unquote, euthanizing meaning that the family member thought that it was uh, more helpful to kill the member um, himself rather than leave it up to the doctors or the nurses. Another uh, reason is uh, prisoner escape, which accounts for about 11% of uh, hospital violence. Uh, in that order, Hospital employees also consisted of a quarter of the victims, roughly about 20-25%, with the perpetrator being the last and primary victim. Areas of the hospital um, where most of the violence occurs are in the emergency department, the parking lot, and the patient rooms in that order. Okay, what I've found was that workplace violence against nurses has increased throughout the world. Uh, I've read studies from Kuwait, Ireland, Scandinavia, Germany, uh, and of course in America. Commonly, the ED wait times was the number one reason why patients were quite angry. And uh, I'm assuming that 
you know, based on the descriptions on the paperwork, that most of the EDs uh, were were developed with the same system uh, that everybody else had, which meant that there was one particular area where a triage nurse was triaging patients and bringing in patients who were admitted and, and turning away or making the other patients wait until they were seen because they were less severe. Uh, so why is change needed? Well, there's rising aggression worldwide with regards to uh, violence against nurses and there's disproportionate perceptions about safety. Also, there's ineffective treatment and ineffective prevention treatment. <clears throat> Examples of patient aggression was one of the things that the papers had trouble identifying. The definition of violence uh, could be anything from uh, um, verbal, verbal aggression to physical assault. Uh, most of the times, uh, uh, female genders well, mostly received a lot of the, the verbal assaults and um, male gender ma nurses were the ones that received mo the majority of the physical assaults. And um, so there, some of the, one of the other studies also found that they, based on uh, qualitative interviews, said patients who had relatives who were well-dressed actually turned out to be the ones that were quite aggressive towards their nurses. Um, also, security personnel had varying degrees of efficacy as far as causing or giving perceptions to nurses about their safety within the emergency department unit or any other unit that they were working on. Um, depend so it depended on uh, security reaction times to uh, an emergency that was called where they would try to de-escalate or at least restrain the patient um, to prevent harm from anybody else. <clears throat> so uh, the hierarchy of my evidence um, uh, are as follows, the majority of my evidence that I've read in the literature were the cross-sectional studies consisting of surveys of nurses' definition of violence, perception, rates of incidents, and reported values. Many analysis found that standardization for definition of violence was a majority of the problem of inaccurate rates. One study did a hybrid uh, experimental versus qualitative study with separate cohorts with and without nursing intervention where the nursing manager, managers addressed the situation and the incidents and either gave a class or some kind of a talk to uh, the nurse who was offended. <clears throat> and uh, But the majority, uh, more than half of my uh, papers were level six qualitative interviews, convenience sample, uh, with convenience sampling um, that also use the inclusion and exclusion criteria. Uh, many times this involved nurses with greater than five years experience who were um, in the emergency room. But there was some bias with that, uh, especially since they had to pick and choose uh, specific nurses and they left that up to a third party RN who also had emergency department nursing uh, experience. However, she had to selectively subject, I subjectively select the, the nurses that they wanted to interview as their subjects. Uh, Chi-square was used to normalize definitions of violence, specifically in the qualitative papers. So some of the key findings that I found was that nursing managers who attempted to address the situation of violence and aggression in the workplace was largely ineffective. And I'll tell you why. Um, also, patients weren't the only ones who were aggressive towards nurses. Besides, I, I, it was behind the whole scope of my practice to study um, nurses against other nurses or other healthcare providers towards nurses, um, uh, directing violence toward the, towards them. What I wanted to focus on was patients, but I also had to broaden that perspective with patients and their family members who were showing t different types of aggression and violence toward nurses in the workplace. And also wanted to address security and safety uh, and how that re re um, relates to the perception of safety. So. One of the first key finding that I found was that training alone is insufficient. If a nursing manager tries to train their, uh, his or her nursing staff and that's all they do is just give a class, the majority of the studies show in the literature that this is largely ineffective. Many of the nurses still called in sick, many of the nurses still felt like they had PTSD or any other type of uh, negative intrusion that, um, that delineated them from having an effective use of their time and being able to be an effective nurse as far as taking care of, of not just the patients that had caused them harm, but also patients uh, after the incidents. <clears throat> My second key finding was that nurses are also ill-prepared, new nurses are ill-prepared to deal with aggressive patients. Now there was a, a one landmark study where they decided that the most predominant uh, symptoms of an aggressive patient, somebody who might either uh, show you aggression or violently hit you, is by using the tool STAMP. It's an abbreviation for S-T-A-M-P, 
uh, which is stuttering, uh, the patient's tone of voice, anxiety, mumbling, and uh, pacing. So if anybody's pacing, mumbling, and showing anxiety, this seemed to be uh, one of the predominant factors of whether or not a patient was going to show you some aggression. Um, However, that hasn't been standardized completely, and uh, as far as I know, there wasn't any particular scoring way to predict whether or not this patient would actually cause you harm. Interestingly, it wasn't just psych patients or psych patients that have substance abuse disorders that were uh, violent. It tended, up, it tended not to be them. It tended to be uh, more patients who were just angry about waiting in the emergency triage room for way too long, according to their perception. <clears throat> Uh, what we did find that was particularly effective in helping nurses get over or, um, or get better from the violent incident and go back to their baseline was peer support. Uh, you couldn't do it alone. If you tried to do it alone, you felt even more isolated. Specifically, if you didn't have any peer support, not just from your family members, but especially from the other nurses in the unit, if you didn't get any help from them, and um, didn't feel like you had any camaraderie, it made the situation even worse. So peer support was highly, highly important in dealing with violence in the workplace. Finally, nurses who thought that the perception of safety was really high because either the security, the security members were very reactive or they felt like they were very safe, ended up to be the least safest nurses because it was a negative, there was a negative correlation there because a lot of the times the perpetrators who did uh, try to attack uh, staff members in the hospital were able to get the guns and other firearms from the same security personnel that was guarding them. Um, so something to think about. Uh, clinical impl implications, I would like to be able to incorporate a code green team of course. Many of the hospitals have this but it should be a multi-tier uh, code. For example, a patient who is largely aggressive that can't be de-escalated by the immediate nursing staff, they could call on a code grade team, usually from the psych unit, to de-escalate the situation themselves. But there's also a lower level called the psych response team that can try to talk down the patient before the patient actually starts wrapping up out of control. And um, some of the local hospitals here, they actually um, they support a, a nursing softball league and it does seem con uh, contrite or um, innocuous, but it turns out to be a great way to increase your peer support uh, within your, and have some camaraderie, camaraderie within the unit, especially if the nursing, night nursing shifts are included as well. Uh, there should be other ways that we can try to incorporate the night shift to be able to increase the unit cohesiveness. <clears throat> And not everybody can play softball or have the time to, so other activities should also be implemented as well. And finally, having the nursing managers try to um, not just lecture to their staff, but to, um, but to, uh, uh, to make the group cohesiveness and the group cohesion stronger would be much more beneficial rather than just simply holding classes to say that they, they try to intervene. <clears throat> Barriers include, like I said, time and um, staggering shifts within the unit, not being able to be cohesive as one, and um, also some cultural language barriers for other patients who, uh, other nurses who decide to practice outside the continental U.S. And uh, so the number one barrier, however, was that underreporting was the number one reason why um, the data for nursing viol uh, violence against nurses was uh, inaccurate. They found that the majority of the ED nurses and even people around them think that dealing with an aggressive or violent patient is just part of the job. However, that's not true. You, uh, it, from what they've gathered from the interviews as well as some of the quantitative studies is that it seems to permeate throughout your life as a nurse. You take it home with you and it affects your future um, uh, future treatment of other patients. So underreporting should be addressed. <clears throat> Ethics, uh, I'll just go quickly over this. I think um, non-maleficence comes to mind. I know it's uh, not, not to, do any, to do no patient harm, but I wondered if this also a, a reverse with patients to not do their, their nurses and their caregivers harm. Also justice, uh, just to figure out the intent of the violent and aggression of the patients against their nurses. Finally, in order to measure, um, um, to measure outcome, I will look at reporting data and to see if the reporting has increased 
uh, with uh, uh, as far as the averages all throughout the nation, but also all throughout the world to see if um, if we're between the mean uh, average of how many times a violence occurs uh, within any one particular hospital. And uh, we're going to try to use tools such as anonymous reporting of violence and definitely focus on making sure that this is a non-punitive activity, that we are not going to punish nurses for reporting violence that happened within the unit, whether it was against them or it was if it was with another staff. <clears throat> Hopefully this will decrease the rates of the workplace violence and we'll be able to successfully uh, um, uh, attribute that to a, a good confidence, uh, good confidence of data that this is actually accurate with regards to um, violence against nurses. Also, uh, we can look at resources as far as financial sheets and um, resources when how many patients or how many nurses call in sick, um, whether it's for uh, um, in or injuries or having to see a therapist or having to see occupational health because of the injuries that they incur from other patients. And then we'd look, take a look at that to see if it increases or if it decreases pre and post uh, uh, a particular time, uh, let's say quarterly every year. And finally, perceptions, we, uh, we would take a, a survey to, make, to get a snapshot view of the nurse's um, rate of perception of safety within the unit to, feel, to see if they actually feel safe and then we'll compare that with rates of uh, incidences and aggressive and violent um, 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 events to see whether or not there is actually a negative correlation uh, within at least our particular hospital. <clears throat> uh, so that's in conclusion, I wanted to uh, reiterate the background that nursing viol uh, violence against nurses via patients and their relatives are increasing worldwide, but that doesn't stop us from doing our job. We as nurses hopefully enjoy and, and see taking care of patients as not just an obligation or a duty, but also because it is what we feel makes us fulfilled in life. Um, but my PICO question was to see whether or not we could implement use, uses to predict and also uh, treat nurses who have been uh, targets of aggression or violence within the workplace, um, i.e. the hospital. Uh, key findings I found were that um, teaching and addressing violence within the unit and lecturing to nurses is largely ineffective. What is effective though is having greater peer support within the unit so the nurse who was offended is actually getting validation and affirmation from his or her uh, fellow colleagues so that he or she can continue to take care of uh, patients and other patients within the vicinity. Um, other reports, uh, other key findings involve a negative correlation between nurses' perception of safety and the actual rate of incidence uh, that happen within that same unit. <clears throat> and finally, uh, some, some interventions to try to educate new nurses with less than five years experience on how to communicate, not just to other patients and their family members, but also to uh, other providers so that they can decrease the anxiety that the patient is already feeling. For example, they can work with a social worker or the respiratory therapist and not just the doctors. And then um, deem a particular family member to be the spokesperson so they can relay the most important medical information to that one family member and the family member can then uh, relay that information to his or her other family members as well and there's a focused way to take care of the patient and that everybody and all the staff are all on one page. And finally if clinical implications involve uh, coordinating code green teams but also with uh, getting the nurse managers to increase unit cohesion rather than merely lecturing to the staff. Uh, barriers of course are going to be under reporting as well as having a difficulty of defining what violence and aggression means uh, when, it's, when it's against nurses in the hospital. And finally to be able to have measurable outcomes <coughs> pre and post incident as well as quarterly within the year. Okay, so um, if you have any questions, please feel free to call. This was the practice for my class presentation. Um, I felt like maybe I talked really quickly, but if you have any questions about my presentation or tips on how I can present myself better, I would love to hear that because I can, I see myself doing more of these presentations um, throughout my career. Okay, so thanks a lot and thanks for listening all the way to the end of the video. Subscribe.
and um, give me some suggestions on what you want. Okay, thanks and bye-bye.